the recording is starting that's great and uh, I'm gonna press the record button here on um, on big blue button as well so there are two recordings but it, it, it will be available on YouTube okay Let's make a start. So uh, you've got an assignment to do on hydraulics. Uh, basically, it consists, or it will consist of uh, changing a valve and doing some fault finding. To be able to do that, uh, you need to, and this is a big part of hydraulic symbols and uh, of hydraulics itself. You need to read symbols and schematics and sort of be able to identify uh, what is what. It's probably a bit of a more boring presentation today, but uh, we'll go through, try to make it as painless as possible. But uh, here we go. Okay, you can see a, a diagram, just follow the mouse, um, at the top of this um, slide here. And that's a typical hydraulic diagram. Yeah? So we can see there's a, a motor here, so that's an electric motor, there's a pump here. Um, then we've got a relief valve, which is down here. We've got a pressure gauge. Uh, we've got, what else have we got here? Another valve. And then we've got a directional valve here, yeah, which is uh, spring operated. Yeah. And then we've got an actuator here as well, and uh, and that's pretty much what the schematic tells us. Down here, we've got a tank, yeah. so it's not really that hard to um, to sort of understand them. Most symbols are pretty much self-explanatory. If you go to the right-hand side at the top of the slide, you see a fairly complex diagram. And obviously, we're not going to go anywhere near this level, but um, if you were uh, an hydraulic professional, an hydraulics professional, you would you would have to sort of interpret this diagram and then find out which is where and, and, and you would use it for fault finding. So for example, if you've got a JCB, you will have hose pipes going all over the place, you'll have levers, valves, uh, you'll have a hydraulic motor <clears throat> uh, and a hydraulic pump, uh, all sorts of stuff you will have, you know, tons and tons of actuators and you would have to sort of determine looking at a diagram which is probably similar to the size of this one here of, uh, you know, if there's a problem, what's gone wrong if it's not obvious, you know, which valve needs to be changed or, or what lever has, has given up. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the bottom, there are just a bunch of circuit symbols, the most common ones. So we've got a pump here, uh, if you follow the, uh, the cursor, then we've got a motor. And, and straight away, you can sort of recognize, you know, for one, the oil goes out. Yeah. And for the other one, the oil goes, goes in. Um, then you've got a combinations as well, sort of a pump motor, and that's not very hard to do in hydraulics. It's pretty much the same device. Um, one instance, the, um, you know, the, um, oil goes one way and in the other, the oil is pushed through and it turns the, uh, it turns the, uh, the shaft. Okay. We've got push buttons, hand levers, pneumatic pilots. Uh, we've got mechanical actuators, hydraulic pilots. Uh, and you can see the difference as well. Hy pneumatic has got nothing in the arrow and hydraulic has. And then a lot of symbols, they're pretty much the same for pneumatic and hydraulic. And um, the only difference is you've got a filled in arrow and like for hydraulic and you've got an empty arrow for pneumatic. Okay, you've got a solenoid here. You can see this as well. So that's just uh, an electrical actuator. So a little lever is pushed and then you can turn a valve either one way or the other and then release all the power. Okay, let's make a start through this um, presentation. Um, right, slide number two. That's what you will learn. So basic hydraulic symbols used in schematic diagrams. And again, the, the level of what you need to know is pretty much what we see down here. Uh, if you understand those symbols here, which you may even do right now, you are probably okay with what we want to do. You need to read a schematic diagram and then also how to use schema schematics to trace a fault. Forgot one thing, let me just go back to the slide. So these are all the units which are covered. So it's unit 306 and then it's, uh, I think it's learning outcome or criteria 1.10, 1.11, 2.1, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 
and um, you've got the tank down here. So the tank is where the oil goes into, so it's not pressurized or anything, so it just falls back into the tank. A um, couple of things which are very important, and we're going to pick this up in fault finding uh, as well, and that is that um, uh, if the level in your tank is not right, uh, the system cannot be pressurized properly. There's a danger that uh, the pump is going to suck in air, and that can potentially destroy your hydraulics. So um, in an hydraulic system, we always have a, a pump, yeah, that's that thing here, and the tank. And the tank needs to have a level indicator, which you can, and temperature indication as well. You can see the level indicator here, yeah, follow the cursor, and then you can see the uh, temperature gauge here. Uh, pressure should be pretty much zero, yeah, should be depressurized uh, once it ends up in the tank. And then the pump picks up the oil and generates a pressure. And when we look at this, this little diagram here, uh, all it is telling us is uh, that everything is going back into the pump. And then here we've got a, a bit of a valve operation here. But um, everything goes back into the pump, uh, into the tank. Yeah. This is the um, circuit symbol for um, a reservoir or a tank. Here we've got an open tank, so that means it's it's not pressurized, so lots of industrial systems, they would have an open tank, they've got a massive oil tank, and um, and there's no pressure in it. Uh, and then when you've got mobile systems, for example, you've got a JCB, um, you would have, uh, or a tractor or something, you would have a closed system, so you would have some sort of closed reservoir, or a tank where everything goes, returns to. Uh, here we've got a pressurized reservoir, again, mobile systems possibly, and um, here we've got um, um, a reservoir with connecting lines, yeah. maybe to top it up or, or whatever. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, are you okay so far? Everything fine? Any questions so far? Um, I wish in the system you could raise your hands and then it would be a quick way to stop and wait for you. Please stop me if you've got a question and uh, then I'll, um, you know, readdress whatever whatever it is. Okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay, this is a circuit symbol for a pump, and and again, notice the the difference. We've got the arrow going up for a pump, and we've also got something like hydraulic motors. And in a hydraulic motor, the arrow goes in because we are pumping oil into the motor, and we are turning. Uh, the shaft around, otherwise a pump and a, and a motor are very, very similar. The only difference is we turn a shaft from a pump, so it could be turned by a diesel engine or an electric motor, and it generates uh, oil flow, and oil flow, if there's some resistance, will generate pressure, and, um, and that's what we are doing. With a motor, it's just the other way around. We uh, Oil flow moves into the motor, and um, we generate a shaft movement, yeah. so we could drive maybe uh, something else, yeah, some, some actuator or something. So that's an hydraulic motor. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether we mentioned this in this presentation. I'm going to mention it now anyway. Uh, hydraulic motors are very, very powerful. Yeah. So um, to give you sort of an idea, when you've got a, a single phase motor, um, the size of a single phase or a DC motor has got to be about for um, a certain amount of power, let's say one horsepower, is 10 times bigger than a three-phase motor. Yeah? And an hydraulic motor can be 10 times smaller than a three-phase three -phase motor. So compared to a DC motor, an electrical DC motor, or a single-phase AC motor, an hydraulic mo motor only needs to be about one hundredth of the size. And I mean, that's quite, that's sort of a rule of thumb calculation. But that is quite amazing with the amount of torque that can be produced. Yeah. So they are really, really powerful, and that's one reason why uh, hydraulic motors are, um, you know, s so much favored and why they're used very often in industrial systems. Obviously, in food um, production, we've got a problem with um, um, with hydraulic motors with the oil, the hydraulic oil that's in there. It's quite dangerous stuff. If it gets into food, there's a major nightmare. Uh, but then again, you've got certain systems like your, um, you know, uh, your trucks. Maybe your forklift truck will have some hydraulics. Um, maybe other systems as well, which are not directly, uh, you know, in contact with food. But then again, we, you know, as part of this qualification, you have to 
uh, get your head around it a little bit. Yeah? You don't need to be a, an expert in this, but you need to sort of understand. Okay, uh, what have we got? We've got the reservoir, we've got a filter here. So that's a circuit symbol for a filter. We've got the pump again. Uh, and you can see, do you know what this little thing below the pump is? Somebody just uh, hit the keyboard. What does the symbol stand for below the pump? Give it a go. <laughs> Anybody listening? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, it looks very much like an emergency stop, but it's it's not the right answer. It looks like like it, spot on, but it's not. You find it very often when you look in these diagrams that it's uh, it's there. There will be an emergency stop on a pump as well. It's very very important. Um, just looking at this diagram, you can't see one on the diagram to the, to the to the right of it, but they, they have to be there. You don't necessarily need this symbol, but very often it's placed there as default, or they put like a separate symbol in there. A pedal, Georgie. Uh, that's a good one. Good one. <laughs> it's it's not unfortunately it's not right, but it's um, a pedal. Where would you use a pedal? You would use it for a brake system, wouldn't you? In a car, you would have a pedal, and it's a bit like that, isn't it? You would um, it generate pressure. And you've got a pump on the other side, which tends to be generated either by uh, by the manifold or um, some some other means. So some air pressure, in, and and in that sense, it's very very close. And you would have, uh, for example, a car braking system would have a pedal. Yeah, it's um, it's a reservoir. Yeah, it's a reservoir. And again, you can see this here. This is sort of the symbol, and then sometimes lines come in and out. Uh, have you got one on the previous line? Let's have a look. Yeah, you can see this here, we've got these lines coming out. And what is this supposed to represent is that the pump is connected to the tank yeah, and not somewhere else. But uh, yeah, good good, good guesses with the emergency stop and, and the pedal. It looks like a pedal, doesn't it? It does. Um, this is a bidirectional pump. So you can um, you know pump stuff back into the reservoir. Uh, we're going to look at this tomorrow. And bidirectional pumps can be very important for pressure relief. You normally have got a pressure relief valve, but... If you want to uh, pump oil, hydraulic oil, away from wherever it is and possibly uh, make sure there's no more pressure on the system, a pump like this would be useful or could be useful potentially. And then we've got something which is a simplified pressure compensated pump. And just have a look how this looks like. We've got an arrow in here. So the arrow is a little bit like a potentiometer. And the problem we have is when you've got a pump and you open up a valve, the pressure is going to drop down because the flow is going to increase. And and the whole idea of a pressure compensated pump is that the pump will automatically go a little bit faster to increase the pressure and to compensate for the flow of oil that's going through this. doesn't make sense. So just to, to, to sort of try and illustrate this again. So you've got a pump. Yeah. And when you open a valve, let's imagine we've got a valve here and this valve is opened. Um, all the resistance goes down yeah? and a lot of oil is just going through the system now which means which means that the pressure drops down on this line here on this top line here so in order to maintain the same pressure um, we have to have a, a pressure compensated pump yeah so for example if i want to run the system at six bars all the time i need to um, compensate uh, you know compensate the pressure a little bit when there's too much flow in the system. Yeah. It's a bit like, you know, your uh, voltage, you put something um, in your, uh, when you've got a car battery, if you put like, if you turn on your headlamps and you don't have the alternator going, the voltage is gonna drop down a little bit yeah, because the battery can't supply it or there's some sort of internal resistance and it loses a bit of the voltage. And, um, and then when you turn on your engine and you've got the alternator going, it sort of has got a regulator and this is a bit like this pressure compensation, sort of an, an equivalent. And the regulator will sort of try and keep the voltage at, at 13.8 volts at all times, regardless of what you're running. And that's a similar thing, so it tries to maintain the pressure. Uh, most systems here, industrial system, will use pressure compensated pumps. Okay. Right, um, <clears throat> we've got um, just a system for real, that's what it looks like. So we've got um, a tank agitator, anti-vortex fitting, 
uh, agitation line, bleed to tongue, um, a ball valve, yeah. and uh, we've got uh, the pump here, that's a pump down here, and um, then we've got some some electric boom control valves, yeah, and the pressure gauge right at the end. Okay, just to sort of quickly go through it, so we've got the tongue, um, <clears throat> the agitator is interesting as well, so that's the return path, it tries to, um, you know, keep the oil kind of agitated to stop it from um, uh, from the viscosity to, to have different types of viscosity if you've got like the warm oil sitting on the top, the cold oil beneath, um, so it tries to stop this from happening. We've got just a, a hunt operated valve, so you open this up and then it goes into the pressure pump and then um, we've got um, again some el el electric valves and a pressure gauge right at the end. Now this circuit on its own doesn't do anything other than pumping oil into in, in a circle at a given pressure, but um, um, but that's sort of pretty much the, the concept of your tank and your, your pump, and, and that's where the starting point is for, for every system. Um, right, next one. Okay, just to clarify, the pump generates pressure, the pressure generates flow, the tank is a return uh, for oil flowing through the system. Yeah. And one analogy is, is what you've already done in Ohm's law. The voltage is like the pressure, uh, the resistance is like the valves and um, actuators like a piston or motor uh, which you may have in the system and then the current is a flow. Yeah. So you've got the pressure, the flow and then some sort of resistance. When you look at the tank, the tank would be equivalent to electric earth like zero volts. Uh, everything goes down to earth and the ground is kept at zero volts so it's normally, not always, normally depressurized. Uh, to get your head around hydraulics, it, it may help, it may not help. Uh, it, it depends um, if you've got an electrical bias or not. So if, if your background is electronics or electrical, it may help. But, but the problem which I found when I go through hydraulics, and again I come from uh, electrical, not from a hydraulic perspective, is that these analogies say they, they eventually come to an end they don't always work and uh, and that's a problem yeah that's a problem okay next one right um we have pressure flow and a return path what's now what now yeah so uh what can we do once we've got oil pressure and the the first one is we've got directional flow yeah we can change the direction of the oil flow uh, and that's very important. So we can have two different circuits, or we can, you know, let it flow back into the tank, or we can, um, you know, turn it on that the oil flows to the um, to the actuator, which might be an, an hydraulic motor or a piston or something to to move something. And and that's what we can do. And when you look at this diagram down here, uh, I'm just going going around with the the cursor. That's um, one of those valves. Yeah and uh, you push them to the right, you push them to the left, and to the right um, you just carry on with the flow as normal, and to the left you reverse the directional flow. Yeah. So um, the pump pumps it either to the motor or to the tank. Yeah. And so you can switch an hydraulic system on and off. It's a little bit, can be used as an on-off switch. Uh, okay. Um, what else do we need to do? One important thing in hydraulics is we need to monitor the pressure and the flow. And there are two items, we're going to look at them in a moment. One obviously is a gauge and the other one is a flow meter. The flow meter um, uses a measurement which is liters per minute. And if you use an American system, it would be gallons per, per minute. And a gallon in a, an American gallon, I think, is 3.8 liters, not 4.5, as here in the UK. But, um, but as far as we are concerned, here in Europe, we use liters per minute for... Um, for hydraulic systems. Yeah. But again, if you have a system, for example, you've got a production line which has been manufactured in America, it might be uh, gallons per minute. So it's a GPM instead of LPM. Uh, we need pressure regulation as well. So we've got valves which um, keep the pressure at a certain level. And, and sometimes if you've got a pressure compensated pump, you don't need this. Yeah. Because you can set the pressure at a certain level anyway, like 10 bar, and it'll go there. If you use pressure regulation, you might have a pump that operates at 20 or 30 bar and uh, you may want to um, you know, drop it down to, to 10 bar at all times for all systems or maybe just for one part of the circuit. 
Um, then you've got pressure relief as well. You've got pressure relief valves. We're going to look at them in a moment. You can see them up here, the circuit symbols. So this is a relief valve. And this is a reducing valve. Now the relief valve, again, very important for depressurizing the system before you start changing anything. So if you need to work on an hydraulic system, you have to activate, activate the pressure relief valves to get rid of any residual pressure, pressure in the system. Or um, obviously you've got a pressure reducing valve as well. Also note um, the, the difference between those two valves. They are pretty much identical, uh, but note the arrow here. I'm just going to try to put the cursor right on top of it. So the arrow is normally in a in a normally uh, normally open position. Am I getting this right? It's the other way around to electrical, and this is one of those analogies where it, where it works. Uh, so normally open. This is this one here, yeah. Normally open, so your oil can flow freely, and this is normally closed, so the valve is shut off. Yeah, opposite to electrical switches. Yeah, when you describe how they work. It's a bit confusing, and, and it confuses me all the time. But anyway, normally closed. Yeah. Sorry, normally open. I'm getting it wrong already. Normally open. Normally open. The switch is open. The oil can flow freely, but the pressure is reduced. And this is um, uh, normally closed. Yeah. So if you want to relieve some pressure, you activate this valve, and then the pressure is uh, released and it's no longer there and you can then start working on the system once you have assured yourself that there's no more pressure in the system okay next one okay this is uh, a gauge typical gauge what it looks like um when you come to the cottage the next time to do the um the assignments uh for the hydraulic part uh you will see these these press pressure gauges all over yeah and it's very important to have them all over the system. I mean, number one is you need to know um, what the pressure is the pump generates, whether it's too low, too high. You need to know what the pressure is uh, in front and after actuators. And you need to be sure that when you work on the system, uh, that is depressurized. And obviously the gauges will tell you the story. Uh, obviously, the problem is a gauge can break. So that's something you need to be aware of. So the point is you can't have enough of these gauges in your system to, to just find out what's going on. Uh, when you look at this uh, diagram here, so we've got pressure gauges and, and the arrow points upwards. Then we've got temperature gauges and you've got this little um, uh, temperature symbol inside the, um, the icon here. Uh, you've got a, ta ta a, ta a tachometer. Um, that's this one here, so it just turns round, and then you've got a torque meter as well. So you can um, find out how much torque, for example, a hydraulic motor is producing. Okay. Right. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, we've got a flow meter here. Uh, that's a symbol for the flow meter. That's what it looks like. I don't know whether you can see this very well. Uh, on the flow meter, you've got... I don't think you can see this. If you if you could read it up here, it would say something like LPM yeah, in lowercase. I should have put this in lowercase as well. It's liters per minute. Yeah? Liters per minute. That's what it stands for. And this is the amount of oil that's flowing through the system. Yeah? And so it goes obviously goes up and down, and you can sort of check it out. Um... Okay, next one, next slide. Right, this is a pressure relief valve, and you can see it's hand operated here. So you've just got um, uh, a little um, screw on, tight thing on there. Um, <clears throat> this is a symbol for that. And um, obviously, I mentioned it already pressure relief valve, get rid of any residual pressure in the in the system. Yeah. Very important when you start working on it. Uh, again, from the symbol, how does it work? So it's normally uh, closed. Yeah, That's in hydraulic terminology. So that means now oil is flowing through. And when you open up the valve, it connects directly to the tank and, get rid of, and gets, gets rid of any residual pressure. Yeah. So you need them to, to work on them. And we talked about an accumulator the last time round in the presentation on um, 
the, the, the safety aspects. Uh, it's the same thing as well. You open up the, the accumulator. So you make sure it's the valve to the accumulator is wide and open. And then you use a pressure relief valve to release any pressure that's in there before you take the thing off. Uh, very, very important. Okay, next one. Uh, pressure relief valve symbols. We've got a whole variety of them. Um, I've just put them up here so you can you can see how they operate. Yeah. Normally they should be uh, like this. Yeah. So um, there's a re relief valve and that's a reducing valve. Yeah. If the connection is made <clears throat> and it's a normally open uh, valve, uh, it's just used for pressure relief. And when you look on here, you, you've got a pressure relief here, there, and there, and then um, you get a um, sorry a reducing valve. Those three here. And then you've got a pressure relief valve where you can see the cursor now here and um, and there as well yeah, it's just another way of representing the same thing okay so that's also a relief valve okay um <clears throat> good question do you need to remember all of them um good question i, I don't know <clears throat> when you when you do the assignment, yeah, the the kit we have, the rig we have, is fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, you need to, for me, t number one is just an introduction for you to um, to get your head around it, to have seen it before. So uh, so our job to let you know that these valves exist and these schematics uh, exist, and then for for you guys, obviously you can take a sheet of paper uh, with you, and. Um, <clears throat> Um, we'll be giving you one anyway. I think Gary is putting something together, and um, and you've got all the symbols on there. So if you need to find out which one is, you just have like a sheet of paper. Um, did you do it with whom? Did you do it, Amy? I, I'm just reading this. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've just been told to do this. If you have done the assignment and everything is cor everything is, is in order, everything is correct, uh, it's not a problem, then you've done it. Um, I, I don't know what's been going on. I've just been told to, um, to do this presentation for you guys. And um, we've got we've set up a, a practical exercise. It's not big. It's about, um, I don't know, maybe half an hour. Uh, max yeah. and it's a bit of fun as well so we have set something up and then um, when you guys come back then we, we're going to go through this if you have done it yeah and all the paperwork and everything is there i don't think it's a problem you don't have to do it again i don't think um yeah anyway we, we'll see we'll see so don't worry too much about it it's it's not hard um it's just putting a few components on uh, getting a feel of hydraulics, how they work, and and what they do, and it's uh, we're not covering too much depth. It's just um, just a little bit. Get an idea, and then also um, what we are keen on is just making you aware of what can go wrong and a little bit of of troubleshooting as well. So if nothing else, it'll just hopefully uh, you know um, um, enhance your skills a little bit yeah, in this area. Okay, carry on. Right, a pressure regulator as well. So this is what they look like. Yeah? You've got the uh, the gauges on here. So that's incoming pressure, outgoing pressure. You've got the regulation on this button here, and that's what the symbol looks like. Yeah. Um. Okay. Right. Um. We've got valves. Valves is the next big thing. That's pretty much what you use to control any actuators. Um, so, for example, if you've got a tractor or JCB, uh, you can see this unit here. You've got you push a couple of levers, and then something happens, like uh, <clears throat> the bucket goes up, or the arm goes up or down, or whatever. Yeah, and um, and you do this with these levers, and you can release a huge amount of power um, by you know the the flick of your finger, and that's the magic of uh, hydraulics. Um, in order to do this, we need to have control valves and um, and we've got a couple of these here, so you can see uh, the normally closed and normally open valve. Um, and then we've got a couple of symbols here. So we've got the push button, the mechanical, and we've got the foot pedal as well here. 
It looks similar to um, to the what we saw in the pump. We've got a solenoid, so that's solenoid operated. Uh, then we've got an hydraulic pilot and um, a pneumatic pilot as well. Now, a pilot is um, is a system so that you can, can so that you can get some feedback. So, for example, if you've got a JCB, um, you dig into the ground. And when you dig into soil or when you dig into concrete, obviously there's a difference. Yeah, concrete it's probably not may not be able to break it. The ground it should be able to or soil should be able to break into it and open it up. With the levers, you get a little bit of feedback if you've got a, a pilot-based system. Um, so you feel on your finger a little bit more resistance than um, you know hitting the concrete than hitting the soil. You know with your bucket on your on your JCB. <clears throat> and that's uh, what the, what the pilot is for. Okay, move on. Right, <clears throat> we've got a di directional control valve, and and you find them all over. That's what they look like. And uh, in this instance, this control valve is operated by. It looks by. I'm just looking at it. I think it's by solenoid. Um, and there are several ways it can be controlled. One of them is um, is a is a pneumatic system. It, I think it's a solenoid. It doesn't look pneumatic, but one of it is a pneumatic system. So you p uh, put a puff of air in there, and um, and it'll move this valve either that way or the other way. Yeah. And uh, what's happening is um, the valve in in quiescent condition, so it doesn't do any move to the right or to the left. Nothing is happening, so the pump is just generating pressure. Nothing is going into the tank. Sometimes you find, just follow the cursor, you find that there's a line going from up the pump to the tank. Yeah. So the pressure just goes right straight back to the to the tank, and um, and that's what we what we have at times. Um, and then when we activate it, for example, if you activate the the right hand side, it goes from the pump to A. And then the return pass goes from B back to the pump. So it's just a normal system. Yeah? And um, when we activate this side here, the left-hand side, where the cursor is, um, then it would go from the pump to B, and A would go back to the tank. Yeah? And so we can change the direction. Just imagine you've got a hydraulic motor uh, connected between A and B. So we would cause it to go into one direction, the shaft to turn into one direction if we activate the, the, the right hand side of the switch of this control valve and then the other direction if we activate the left hand side and if we don't activate either of both um, the oil is pressed straight back to the tank and it doesn't go anywhere near the motor so the motor doesn't turn yeah. so that's the concept behind it so we, we can have um, um, a solenoid yeah we could have a pneumatic system which we use to control this um, we could have an hydraulic system as well, where we've got like, um, you know, similar to the pilot system, where we can, you know, flick an hydraulic switch and it puts in oil one way or the other and it pushes it to the right or to the left. And then we can, um, we can control the, uh, the flow of, of the oil and, and, you know, move a motor, you know, right or left. Or if you've got a piston, shove it out. Or when we then uh, switch over, move the piston back. So we could go from one side to the other. And that's um, that's what we could do with this valve here. Again, these valves you find them all over the place, and um, they're sort of an essential part of any hydraulic system. Also, they're quite complex, and it's quite a lot of stuff which can go wrong with them. So you can have some problem with the control, either with the solenoid or if it's hydraulic with the hydraulic part that controls it, or the um, the uh, pneumatics. Or, um, because it's quite a complex piece of equipment, uh, stuff can go wrong inside as well. You know, that things get clogged up or leaky and they don't quite operate the way they should. Okay, move to the next slide. Soon done. Um, right, <clears throat> now that we control the flow of the oil, what about the actuators? Yeah. And um, we're going to look at them now, what actuators we have and, and the symbols for them. So we've got linear motion, we've got rotary motion, and we've got uh, oscillatory motion. So oscillatory motion is a bit like, a, uh, you know, like an oscillator goes uh, there and back, there and back. Um, the piston 
based using a cylinder. So we've got a single action piston. So the, the, all we can do with the oil, with the hydraulics, is move the piston forward. And when the pressure goes, when we don't put any pressure on the oil anymore, uh, then the piston will just uh, be pulled back by spring. Yeah. And again, we can see by the circuit symbols, you know, which, what type of actuator we have, whether it's a piston-based actuator or the next one is it's a double action uh, piston. Yeah. And so this piston is controlled by a bidirectional valve. That's a valve you've seen before. So uh, I'm down, down here now. So that's what you've seen before. You know, we, we switch the valve over and then we move the piston either to the front or to the back. And we can stop the piston movement by, um, uh, by putting the switch in the middle position. Yeah. Uh, we've got an hydraulic motor. Yeah. So we talked about this a bit earlier. And then we've got repetitive action. That's the oscillatory motion. So where something happens again and again and again. Yeah. So again, this can be done by hydraulics. Right, I hope it's still working. It's just knocked me out here. Uh, okay. Um, let me just correct this. Right. Um, no, what about, okay, we've done this. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, um, it's just knocked me out here. It tells me that the audio is connected again. One, two, three, can you hear me? One, two. Um, just a quick test, can you hear me? Um, right, just testing, can you hear me? Right, can you hear me okay? Um, it's just knocked me out. I just need to upload the presentation again. Uh, it'll be done in one minute and then we'll be quickly going through it. 
Uh, right, let me just upload the presentation one more time. Uh, right, how do I do this? Okay, we are back. Uh, we are back in business. Sorry for that. It's uh, is it coming? Yeah, we are back. Uh, let me just move forward. Um, okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Right, let's let's quickly go through this and then we are, we are done in a minute, about 10 slides to go. So why hydraulics? Um, it's a huge force can be transferred using hydraulics. Like I mentioned before, the rule of thumb is a hydraulic motor only um, needs to be uh, one-tenth of the size of an equivalent electric three-phase motor. And that one is only one-tenth of the size of a DC motor or single-phase AC motor. So a very small motor can generate a huge amount of force and huge amount of torque. Uh, hydraulic liquids do not compress, it's important to know, so you can do more precise control actions than you could do with pneumatics. Yeah, So again, that's very uh, important. Uh, hydraulic systems suffer from lousy to really bad acceleration. This is one big problem. Pneumatics are pretty much, not instantly, but very, very fast. So you get very fast reaction. And it's just like the, um, the actuators, they, they, they fly out and come back, and it's pretty fast. With hydraulics, you don't get this. So and that's sometimes the reason when you look at, um, uh, for example, I would think at Coca-Cola, uh, when you've got these bottles going through at rapid speed, um, that hydraulics is not in use, but um, they use uh, pneumatics instead. Whereas when you go to a car manufacturing place and you've got welding robots, um, where um, it's more important to have precise position of the, uh, the welding arm, of the robotic arm, um, they, they are more likely to use robotics and pneumatics. Okay, uh, next one. Um, right, this is what an hydraulic motor looks like. And um, you get um, um, just an intake and an outtake. They're fairly straightforward. You can see a little bit of a, of a rotor here. Uh, oil is pumped through and uh, you generate a huge amount of, of torque. You've obviously got some seals to try to keep the oil inside the motor and um, anyway that's what they look like these are the symbols so this is a bidirectional motor you can see the shaft here you can see um, a unidirectional motor so it just goes into one direction and the shaft only turns into one direction and then you've got uh, a variable motor as well so you can um, um, you know adjust the speed of the of the hydraulic motor okay um, next slide uh, the hydraulic piston it's a very interesting item here so you've got an intake and an outtake so um, we have got the flow port oil is pumped in and then obviously we've got all this pressurized area which um, can be used to push the piston forward and then we've got the retract flow port and, and again the the valve which we use is the directional flow valve you remember with the um, you know the three positions uh, and uh, one crosses over and the other one where it goes straight through and that would be a typical valve you would use to con to control this piston here so it goes in goes out yeah, depending on um, the position of the port you have and you can also stop right in the middle so if you only go out for um, you know for half the uh, the amount and you can just switch the flick the switch over goes into the middle no more oil is pumped into it but the systems are equally pressurized on both sides so um, so nothing is going to happen. 
um, the, the, the piston stays, stays put. One thing to, uh, I just mentioned this here now, when you look at hydraulics, one thing to mention is that um, uh, on, the re on the forward cycle, um, the piston has got a lot more power than on the reverse cycle, uh, on the retract flow. And the reason is that the area, the surface area the oil presses on, uh, because of the, the shaft here, is a lot smaller than uh, on the forward side, where the piston is pushed forward. Uh, it's just something to bear in mind. There's less area, and therefore there's less torque produced and generated than on the other side. Okay, I'll move on. Hydraulic piston and cylinder symbols, and these, these are the symbols you're dealing with. Yeah? And some of them are almost self-explanatory. So here we've got the oil inlet, li inlet line. So that's uh, uh, where the oil pressure, the oil is uh, pushed in, and the pressure is generated, and the piston is pushed forward yeah, against the spring. And then obviously we need to get the, the piston back, you know, when we don't need it to be in the forward position. And, and all that's done here is uh, the pressure is released, yeah? So we could do this with the pressure relief valve, or we could do this with one of the three-way switches where we just feed the, the pressure back to, to tank. And then um, the, uh, the spring would just return the, um, the piston back to its original position. Uh, this is a symbol for uh, the, the um, um, bidirectional piston, yeah, where we've got the, the forward and then the re return valve you know, to open move the piston either forward or to move it backwards. And then we, we've got a bi-directional piston here. Uh, it's a double acting piston. Uh, and uh, we can move it either way. So we can push it out that way or that way, depending on uh, how much oil we pump in where. Again, double acting cylinder. Um, it's not the right sequence, isn't it? It's uh, that one here. So that's the one with the, uh, the two ports. Single acting cylinder, that's the one with the single port but the spring. Yeah. And then we've got the double acting cylinder, double piston, and that's this diagram down here. Okay. Uh, next one. Um, again, what does this uh, symbol stand for? How does it work? I'll um, obviously just mentioned it. So it's just a, a single acting cylinder um, how does it push back though? Because we haven't got a spring in this one. And normally the spring is on the, um, in the diagram as you've seen. How does it push back? What do you think? Any ideas? Okay, how does the piston push back? So if I pull, push oil in here, the piston goes forward, and uh, how does it go back? How does it go back to its original position? So I open the relief valve here, so the oil goes to tank, but it doesn't mean that, uh, that the piston goes back. What do I need in order for the piston to go back? Yeah, if you haven't got a spring, what else could you use? Um, drain valve would be in there, um, but but what else does it rely on for it to go back? Uh, yeah, spot on, Jose, spot on. So it's gravity yeah, or some force that's acting on the piston. Yeah. So, for example, if, um, if the piston um, is uh, upside down, sort of points downwards, um, uh, it would just sort of hang and nothing would, would much happen. But uh, if you've got some force that goes on there, so normally uh, a typical example for this one is uh, an hydraulic car jack. Yeah? So if you've got an hydraulic car jack, you, you pump it up and you've got like a little relief valve right in the, in the bottom. And, um, and when you open it up, um, it sort of slowly goes down if, if the car is no longer there. And in order to put it back in, in, the, uh, in the box, you very often have to press it down by hand 
because the last sort of couple of uh, millimeters or, or centimeters, um, it'll just stick there. Yeah? It won't go all the way back. Uh, and you have to apply a tiny, tiny bit of force to try and get it back as well. So it relies on gravity. So for example, if you have car drag, it would rely on the car to press the piston back down again. And um, if you've got, again, another system, um, you know, which is putting some pressure onto the, the piston end, then it would, uh, you know, ensure that the, the piston goes back. Again, that's a symbol. There's no spring in here in the symbol. Let me just go back to show you. You can see uh, this is a spring-loaded one. You've got a spring to press it back. And uh, with this symbol, you haven't got a spring, but you would need something, some force. It could be gravity. It could be something else sitting on top of the piston um, to, to push it back. Okay. Explain the hydraulic circuit. Um, how much time have we got? I want to finish at about 5 past 3. Um, I leave it up for a moment, yeah, and I'm not going to ask any questions, so just sort of try and see whether you can identify all these things. So we've got one here, then we've got this thing here, and you can also see a little bit how this works, yeah. Uh, we've got that thing here, and then we've got that thing here as well, yeah. I just give you a moment, how much, I give you half a minute to just get your head around it. And that's pretty much the level we're going to work on the hydraulic rigs uh, as well. So we're not going to uh, go much deeper into it. It's just a few components and then um, we're going to put some faults on it. You need to recognize those faults, do some fault finding and then and find out what's wrong and fix it. And then obviously do all the right processes like isolate everything, make sure it's depressurized. Okay, a few more seconds and then I'll talk you through. Right, okay. <clears throat> so, first of all, that thing down here, uh, right at the bottom, follow the cursor, is, um, is a tank. Then we've got the pump here because the arrow points upwards and there's a shaft and something turns the shaft. It could be a diesel motor or a petrol motor. It could be... Um, an electric motor, a three-phase motor, something like that. Uh, then we've got um, um, a, a circuit which, in uh, you know, when the valve is not activated, just puts it all straight back to the tank. So it goes through the tank back here. And then we've got, in case there's too much pressure for whatever reason, so for example, if you go through and, and the piston is fully extended and the pressure is building up, we've got a pressure relief valve here. And, and that will kick in, and when there's too much pressure, just put it back to tank. Yeah? So we don't get like um, the valve exploding into our faces. If it's not made for the pressure, um, it, is, um, you know, it is generating, this bump is generating. So, I mean, that circuit here is a little bit like a, a pressure compensating, a pressure compensating pump, yeah. So that's what it kind of tells us, yeah. But obviously the pressure compensating pump could be symbolized here as well, so it would just be... Uh, a symbol, you know, with a little bar through there, a little arrow through there, and it would tell us um, it's a pressure compensating pump. Okay, and then we've got solenoids here. So that symbol here, you can see this on the right and to the left, it's a solenoid, and the solenoid would activate and move the switch either to uh, the right or to the left. Yeah? And then we've got a spring as well, so when the solenoid is not activated, it'll just push it back into its original position. Yeah? So we've got a spring, and we've got a solenoid. So solenoid is just like a, um, you know, like an electric uh, plunger, which is um, uh, energized with a coil. Yeah? So a magnetic coil uses magnetism. Okay, so when we energize A, then the pump is connected to A. The oil goes in here. The piston goes all the way to the end. And then it goes down to, to B. Yeah. And it goes back to tank. And obviously, when the piston is pushed all the way to the end, there's a lot of pressure build up here because there's no nowhere for the for the oil to go. And so we've got the pressure relief valve, which comes in here to make sure that the pressure is kept at a certain point. Okay, when we move the piston the other way, yeah, so B is activated, and uh, then P goes to B, so the oil goes 
into the uh, the piston chamber, move the piston back, and um, and then whatever oil is pushed out of A goes from A. And because we are now having the uh, the B sim sim symbol here, so it goes from A to the tank, and then um, we've got the piston retracted. Yeah. So that is um, that is uh, the method this works, and this is pretty much the level uh, you need to we need to go to for the um, for the assignment. Yeah, it's not much more. Yeah, it's it's roughly about there. Okay, any questions? Are you okay with this? Are you are you fine? Yes. No. Any questions? Okay, <clears throat> let's move on. Um, right, um, again, this is sort of how it's built up. Double acting cylinder, directional control valve, that's what this thing is. Uh, this is connected to pump, that's to tank, and that's to A and B. So it's one is goes there, the other one is a return path. Uh, relief valve, in this instance, is set to 3000 PSI. We have got, interesting as well, it's got 10 gallons per minute, not 10 liters per minute. That's what the pump generates or what it tries to generate. And it's a so-called fixed displacement pump. So it's not uh, a pressure compensating pump. Yeah. Okay. Right, next one. Explain the circuit, yeah. Uh, is this the last one? Yeah, it's the last one. Let's, let's go back, have a quick look at the circuit. I'll give you a moment to go through the circuit. Now, obviously, you haven't got all the um, the diagrams with you, so it's a little bit a um, little bit harder to um, to analyze what's going on here. Um, okay, um, we haven't got much time. I'm just going to talk it through it quickly. So we've got a pump here. Uh, we've got a, an electric motor turns into this direction. That thing here is a pump. Uh, we've got um, um, like a, a ball joint valve yeah, to open the thing up and to control the pressure to you know set it to one bar. Uh, then we've got a pressure relief valve in case it goes over 50 bar. And then here we've got a switch uh, which normally puts everything down to tank. Yeah? So this is could be like a jack, an hydraulic jack of some sort. Um, and uh, in, in normal conditions, this is where the switch is sort of trying to put it, it drains it down to tank. That little thing down here means tank. Then we've got a lever here. When we activate the lever, um, that thing moves into line with uh, with this bit here. I don't know whether you can see the cursor. And um, and the oil pressure is sort of pushed up uh, into the the piston here. And it, it looks like a jack. It could be, it be anything. Whatever is um, on top of this bit here is going to be pushed up you know, bit by bit. And here we've got a pressure gauge to tell us what is happening. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> and then down here, we've got uh, an interesting circuit as well. So we've got um, a pressure relief valve, and then we've got a filter system as well, when it goes down to tank. Yeah. So and the tank gives us the information, it's got 50 liters. Yeah. So we get quite a bit of information from here. But once you know, know the symbols, especially the pressure relief valve. You've got like a little, uh, this is, will have a hand lever, so we can operate the lever and um, get this going and, and sort of turn this on or off. And then we've got another lever here, yeah, which we can operate. And, uh, and then we can either, you know, move this up. And if you're done with this, we operate the lever, puts this line straight down to tank, and it goes back to tank. Yeah. And then we've got another, you know, pressurized circuit to go through this filter here, make sure that we're going to look at this uh, in the next session, that the hydraulic oil is in, in good condition. Okay, uh, we are done, I think. Uh, so this is the last slide. We looked at hydraulic circuit components and symbols. We identified simple hydraulic circuits. Um, final remark, please note that the symbols presented in this presentation are not comprehensive. Yeah? There are a lot more hydraulic schematic symbols and uh, actuators and so on. Yeah? So all we've done is, is a little bit... Um, scratching the surface and looking at, at very basic and elementary um, um, 
you know, hydraulic systems. So, for example, um, a hydraulic jack you might use for your car to, to pump it up. You know, we could represent it with these symbols here. We've got a tank in there. We've got a lever you know, where we generate pressure. That's equivalent to our pump. Um, and um, lots of other things. So, so, I mean, that's the level and maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah? But, uh, but it's a huge field and it, it, um, it's a lot of stuff you have to cover. But we don't need to, okay, especially for the food industry. All we need to know is sort of basic concepts. Uh, there's obviously the health and safety stuff, which we looked at last time. And then um, there are um, sort of other bits um, as well, where, which we need to understand a little bit. You know, the concept of once you get these concepts right, we talked, on, talked about today, it's, it's not that hard. So pretty much everything else will fall into uh, quite easily into, to, into the whole idea of, of dealing with hydraulics. Okay. I'm going to close at this point. Thank you very much for, for coming on. It's, it's uh, great to have you here. Thanks for, for contributing as well. I really appreciate it. And um, um, apologies for, uh, you know, the presentation conking out here uh, a little bit earlier. Um, could recover it. I hope it will be okay tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Um, please come tomorrow. Tomorrow is about um, uh, all the fault finding. It's one uh, presentation we have to do. Uh, this presentation, I need to tidy it up where it's uh, conked out. And uh, once I've done it, I'll upload it as well. So you can have a look at it again if you choose to do so. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have a great Monday. Great start to the week. And hope you've got a, uh, you've got a good week. And maybe if you get time, see you tomorrow. And um, if you haven't done the, um, the health and safety stuff on Wednesday as well. So thanks for, uh, you know, for, for coming here online it's a bit poorly it's a four out of 30 everybody has been notified now so i guess a lot of people are on holiday anyway thanks again so bye bye